My name is Russ Johnson. I'm the president of the Phoenix Herpetological Society, and we're here today at our Scottsdale Sanctuary. Uh, it is an educational sanctuary. We've got quite a number of uh, very strange animals. We have uh, 19 different species of crocodiles and alligators, uh, which aren't supposed to be here. We have cobras, mambas, gaboon vipers. Uh, uh, we've got some of the most exotic crocodiles in the world. So, uh, you know, from that standpoint, uh, we've got quite a diversity of animals that you're not going to see anywhere else. On display and come to us for a variety of reasons, we are basically rehab them, give them a quality of life until they either find permanent homes or live out their life here at the uh, facility. A lot of these animals that uh, are here at PHS come to us in a variety of ways. Uh, sometimes people uh, come from other states where they've been legal and come here and they brought in an animal that's illegal such as a crocodilian or, or a venomous snake uh, that, that is not from Arizona. So they either get confiscated by game and fish uh, or the police department or people voluntarily surrender them. Uh, we also get a, a large number of our animals that um, are pet trade items and, and they either got too big to handle, uh, they had no idea they were going to live this long. We have tortoises that live 150 years, snakes live 30 years. So a lot of impulse buying takes place so we end up with a lot of pythons and boas and big lizards that uh, people had no idea what they were getting into so it creates an issue for them. All of a sudden the uh, newness wears off that animal and here they end up. Before they buy these animals, uh, they need to do a little research, which is easy to do. They can even call us or go to our website, but they need to find out how long is it going to live? Uh, how big is it going to get? Uh, what is the special criteria for that specific species? You know, is it something to where they've got to create an environment that's going to be very difficult for them to maintain in Arizona? We have some tropical environments here that um, are very difficult to maintain and it'd be hard to do on an individual basis and it's also very costly. Every um, animal that um, is uh, venomous that's not from Arizona is illegal to have in Arizona. So you can't bring an uh, indigenous uh, rattlesnake from another state to Arizona. You're breaking the law. Uh, we have non-native um, venomous snakes that come from outside the country. Those are against the law. Uh, one of the biggest ones that we see brought in are um, snapping turtles and alligators. Everybody thinks that cute little alligator is going to make a great pet because it's chirping, it makes a real cute sound. Well, it grows a foot a year, pretty soon you've got an animal that no longer fits in your bathtub and, and is big enough to remove your hands. On the venomous snakes, to give you an example, there's no anti-venom here. So if somebody's bit by a cobra, the closest place to get it is either Dallas or San Diego. By the time they fly it in, uh, if you're still alive, you're gonna be out on a ventilator and probably in a coma. Doesn't make any sense to expose yourself, children, or law enforcement to those kind of animals. We have a number of uh, stories that, uh, about our denizens here. Uh, Clem is a huge alligator out there. Um, and he was released on the Arizona Strip when he was 16 inches long. Uh, he was up there for 20 years and the guy finally sold his land to the BLM. And nobody had been out there for four or five years and the BLM went to clear it up and, and they came in back to St. George and says, I'm not going back until you get rid of this alligator. So we were hired to go trap this guy. Well, he was almost starved to death by that time we trapped him. He was about eight foot three, 20 years later, and he was about the size of a railroad tie, darn near starved to death. Uh, we, he's here now, he's 10 and a half feet long, he's 450 pounds, uh, he is a grouch, but uh, he is a success story. You're talking about the epitome of survivor. Um, this guy had everything going against him. It snowed, it, it uh, froze up there, but the spring came out at 68 to 72 degrees and allowed him to live. PHS uh, main emphasis is education. Uh, we do tours here. Uh, they're guided, unlike uh, a lot of different places. It's not free roaming. Uh, you're taken with a tour guide, usually Daniel. Uh, the the uh, tour is going to take two and a half, three hours. You're going to go through, you're going to hear about all these different animals. Uh, we have some CITES animals here that are highly endangered. You're going to learn why that is. But a number of our pens are interactive. The people are going to go in the pens. They're going to feed tortoises. Uh, they're going to be able to hold some snakes. Uh, they're going to be able to hold some lizards. We go out and do a lot of schools. Last year we uh, were in front of 150,000 students, which you know for an all-volunteer staff is really good. Uh, and, that in, and that encompassed over 100 school visits. We do a number of corporates. Um, we go to hotels and, and various other expos to, to display and, and basically uh, provide information about the, the pluses and the minuses of having these animals. Well, the community has, been, uh, it has embraced us very well. Um, they, um, at first, you know, the idea of going out and interacting with a snake is not in the top 10 uh, 
ideas of most people, but when they get here, there's a, a lot of empowerment with the knowledge we impart to them. So we find out that um, we get a lot of uh, requests by word of mouth to different schools, different facilities, and we get people not only from Arizona, but they're referring people from out of state. We get people here out of state every year, every year that come back and tour the facility because we're always uh, having new exhibits on, on display. The community has been very supportive. PHS uh, relies on public support, grants, things like this, volunteers. Uh, we have one paid employee and 1,500 animals, uh, so it, it shows you the need is great. Uh, we have um, the need to have people come out here and help on a daily basis, Monday through Saturday. Uh, if people want to come out here and tour, they can uh, either call the tour line, which is 480-513-4377, uh, or go to uh, phoenixherp.com. And, and they can get information there. You can even fill out a volunteer application on that website. You can donate to us. Uh, we go through uh, tens of thousands of dollars worth of food monthly, okay? Uh, any help we can get from the public is greatly appreciated, including your time, by going to the um, website, phoenixherp.com. It is a learning facility, so if you volunteer out here, you're not only gonna get the personal fulfillment of helping these animals, but you're gonna get to see animals you'd never have an opportunity to work with before in your life.